hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For anyone that's been following for a few weeks now, you'll already know that earlier this summer I was on board MSC Virtuosa on a seven night cruise from Southampton up to Norway. Now, in this video today, I'm going to talk to you guys about everything there is to discuss on the subject of dining. Now, before I cruised on Virtuosa this year, I was very, very aware of the fact that MSC gets a really mixed review when it comes to dining. And I was a little bit nervous actually about what to expect on the ship because one of my number one fears about cruising is getting onto a ship, not having a great experience with the food and then just constantly being hungry because I'm refusing to eat what they put down. Now, some people in their reviews sit way over here and they say, nope, fantastic, nothing to worry about, really enjoy it. Some people sit somewhere in the middle. And then unfortunately, you get people that also sit on the other side where they say, Bleh, you know, definitely not for me. I probably wouldn't cruise with MSC again because of X, Y and Z. Now, in terms of where I sit on that spectrum, I am definitely much further over here where I would say that in comparison to what I saw from MSC pre-COVID, now that's important because I've seen a huge change, I would absolutely say the improvement has been massive and I definitely sit further over, over that end now. Now, in terms of what we're going to look at in this video today, so I'm going to cover off with you each of the five included or complementary dining options from MSC on Virtuosa. We're then going to look at each of the five speciality restaurants and we'll also look at the the huge, but we'll get to that in a sec, marketplace buffet as well. So pretty much all of your dining options on that ship, what can you expect to see? But before we get into that, a little bit about the ship. Now, MSC Virtuosa is huge. For anyone that has seen the ship or looked even at pictures of the ship, you will know that she's a bit of a monster. Now, the ship's pretty new. It was only launched in 2021, so straight after the COVID pandemic and it's 19 decks high and holds just over 6,000 passengers. Now, my number one fear with a ship that big is that it's going to feel really, really crowded all of the time. Now, I haven't actually sailed on those huge Royal Caribbean ships, but that's definitely my concern with them, that it feels crowded. But what I would say with this one is MSC have built 11 different dining venues in here, and they've also built, believe it or not, 21 different bars on this ship. So what I would say is that the crowd control on here is actually pretty good because everyone spreads out really, really well across those, what, 21 plus 11, 32 different, <laughs> different venues. So you've yeah got nothing to worry about from a crowd point of view. Now, in terms of how speciality dining works on this cruise line, the first big thing I would pass on is that you have to look at booking before you get on board. Now, some cruise lines don't charge any extra to book after you get on the ship, but that is not the case with MSC at all from what I've seen. Now, what I'll talk to you about is the prices and the details that are quoted for my next cruise on Virtuosa, which is going to be in December of this year. And what I'm seeing there is that versus the prices on board that I've just had a few weeks ago, you're probably looking to save about 15 or 20% through adding to your booking before you go. Now you've got four different options for speciality dining before you get on board and you can do it really easily once you book your cruise, don't worry about it before, but once you book your cruise, hop onto your onboard account and just add them. It's really, really straightforward, but you've got four options. So number one, they call it the duo, where they give you two speciality dining options for one price. Now the two that you can get on your account is Indochine and Butcher's Cut, which again, don't worry, we'll come back to what Indochine and Butcher's Cut even are later in the video. You've then got the Trilogy, which gives you the duo plus one more restaurant. So in this case, you get the sushi or the teppanyaki restaurant. And then you can also book the option, which gives you four different dining options, which they refer to as the finest four. Now that gives you all of the options we spoke about in the Trilogy, plus Ola, which is essentially the onboard Mexican restaurant. Now, I know what you're thinking, that's quite a lot of information, and now what we're going to do is jump into each of the venues and we'll walk you through what you can see on the ship. Now to get us started, let's look at what's already included in your fare. Okay, now the first three dining rooms that we're going to look at today are actually all located on deck six and they're all on the same part of the ship. Now, the lovely thing with that is that if this is one of the restaurants that you're allocated, it's pretty easy to find your way there for dinner because generally speaking, at the mealtimes, 
everybody's walking in the same direction. Now you can see here that you've got the symphony restaurant on the left hand side, you've got the opera on the right, and then straight down this corridor, if you were to continue walking, you'd get to Minueto, which I will show you shortly. Um, now the opera restaurant is actually the one that I've been allocated on both of my Virtuoso Cruises, which has been really good for, I guess, A, getting my bearings, but B, just being comfortable from day one, which was a real plus. Now, as we walk around here, you'll see some meals flashing up on the screen. That's just to give you a bit of an idea of the type of food that we were served during our cruise this year. As I said earlier, massive improvement on what I've seen from MSC before. And to be honest, I would absolutely say the arrival in some of the, the other bigger American cruise lines now, which is really, really good to see. Now, with MSC previously, pre-COVID, I... As a solo traveller, I had to share a table with a lot of other people that I didn't know. Now, sometimes I'm in the mood for that, other times I'm really not. So it's been really great to see that Virtuosa this year is allowing you to either request a smaller table or to sit at a larger table as well. Now, moving across the hall, you've got the symphony. So this is directly opposite where we were before. And there's not too much of a commentary for me to offer you in here, really, because as you'll see when we go inside... This is p potentially scarily similar to what you've just seen across the hall. I have never seen a complete mirror image replicated across the corridor, but in here they absolutely achieve that. Now the benefit, I guess, is that whether you're dining in symphony or whether you're dining in opera, you should then, in theory, have exactly the same dining experience. So. In terms of which one would I recommend you book into, or which one would I recommend you request, to be honest, go with either. There's absolutely no benefit to going for one or the other. Now, after you pass the two restaurants that we've just looked at, so after you pass Symphony and after you pass Opera, you end up in this very glitzy, very glam section that we saw a few people using it to catch up over drinks before dinner, for example. Now, there isn't really that much here. It's very showy considering it's in the middle of the corridor, but there are some wine vending machines. So if you want to come down here and have a drink before dinner, you absolutely can. The only point that's worth mentioning is that if you're on a drinks package, the drinks here aren't included. So that means that regardless of whether you're on a package or not, you have to pay extra for the drinks in these machines. Okay, so right at the end of that corridor on deck six, so after you've passed those two restaurants and after you've then passed that section with the wine, you end up at Minueto. Now this, again, there's not too much to talk about in here because it's another really large format main dining room. Now, the, the big thing that I did realise on this class of ship, and you'll see what I mean when we move into the speciality restaurants, the main dining rooms on here are absolutely huge. They obviously have to be due to the fact that the ship holds over 6,000 passengers, but there's a really noticeable difference between the main dining rooms and the speciality venues. Now, what you'll see shortly is some of the speciality venues, in particular places like the Butcher's Cut, are really, really small. Now, I, I love that because you feel like you're on a much smaller ship than what you are, but I do sometimes feel these dining rooms feel a little bit open and a little bit too big, maybe. Sp especially as a solo traveler, it can be quite difficult if you nip out to go to the bathroom to come back in to actually remember where your table was because it's a little bit of a labyrinth. But hey, the next clip after this one will show you the view from the back windows of this restaurant which really, this is the biggest selling point, where I took this when we were docked in Norway, but if you can imagine being out at sea during your meal with completely uninterrupted views of the wake, it must be absolutely incredible. So we're now moving up a deck, so we're now moving up to deck 7, 
and I actually can't tell you too much about the Il Campo restaurant other than the fact that that's the name of it. Now the reason for that is that on both of my cruises this restaurant hasn't actually been operational. Now the people that I spoke to had explained that the reason why it wasn't operational was mostly just due to capacity and due to staffing levels. There wasn't really a requirement to run an additional restaurant, which I actually get and it makes perfect sense. And it's really nice to see that when this ship gets even busier from where it is at the moment, there's going to be additional dining rooms to help deal with that demand. So, hey, if you've cruised on Virtuosa since this video was uploaded, and if you've dined in El Campo, I would love to know what did you think of it? So maybe leave a comment if that's applied to you. So the final included dining option that we're going to look at today is the Marketplace Buffet. So you'll find this up on deck 15 and then if you go past all the pools and basically head towards the back of the ship, you'll find yourself in this corridor. Now this is without doubt the largest cruise ship buffet that I've actually seen. And it's really nice to see that when you go in now, they've got these really, really professional hand washing stations. Now, I hadn't actually seen this before on a ship pre-COVID, but during meal times, there's always someone standing at the door to usher you in, to wash your hands with hot water, to then sanitize your hands. So it's about as safe as it can be when it's a buffet at the end of the day. Now, as I walk you around here, you'll see some pictures flashing up on the screen, which show you what it's like when there's a bit of life in the place. Unfortunately, we were on a, a particularly busy sailing up to Norway actually, so it wouldn't have been possible and it also wouldn't really have been appropriate to walk around with a camera because I think I would have ended up annoying all of, <laughs> all of my fellow passengers. So unfortunately, you're going to have to appreciate the scale of it just on a, a nighttime walk. Now, the food up here was really, really good and it actually on this cruise has completely changed my perspective to eating at the buffet. I historically would only eat in a buffet if for whatever reason the restaurant was too busy or if I was really really tight for time or if I had for example slept in and missed a meal but now my go-to is if I'm on a cruise with really really good scenery and if I'm on a cruise where I want to chill out outside for a bit longer my go-to actually is now the buffet so I'll show you in a second some of the views that we had but if you're cruising to Norway or if you're cruising to I mean, I'm also just back from Alaska, so if you're planning a cruise like that, to be honest, my biggest bit of advice would be to consider having a night in the buffet just so that you're available with your camera to jump up and take any photos, take any videos that you want, because there's nothing worse than being stuck at the main dining room. So here's a prime example where we were cruising through the most remarkable place that I've ever seen, and we were just right in it because we were at the buffet. Now moving on to look at the speciality options, it's pretty key to note that all of the speciality restaurants on Virtuosa are all located off of this main promenade. So you'll find the lower part of this promenade on deck 6 and then deck 7 has got a couple of other restaurants up there as well. But the first one that we're going to look at is Indochine which is on deck 6 of the ship. Now in terms of what this restaurant's classed as, it's classed as French Vietnamese. Now if, like me, you had <laughs> never heard of that before then you've got a huge array of food in here actually I was really really impressed by some of the meats that you could get on here which were much more rarer than what I've seen on cruise ships before now my parents are both vegan and one thing that I always look at when I get on a cruise is is this something that I could bring my parents on because they've never been on a cruise before and I'd love to get them on one one day and Indochine is a great example of a restaurant where I, as a meat eater, would be happy, but actually their vegetarian and vegan offerings are also fantastic. Now, on our sailing, we were pretty close to capacity going up to Norway, and it was quite difficult to book into Indochine, but yeah, I think there was probably three nights that they didn't have any availability, so just make sure that you get that one booked in in advance. Now, top tip with this one, I actually sometimes don't really like sitting in the main bars on the ship, and this one here that you're looking over Indochine's barriers into was great because a lot of people thought that was part of the restaurant, but the reality is it's the bar next door. So when you come down here, you can use your drinks package. The cocktails in here are really good actually, and they're also included depending on what level you go for. So yeah, come and check this out. 
Now, further along the corridor, you'll find Ola, which is the onboard Mexican restaurant. Now, unfortunately, I can only show you the food from in here that we ate. I can't show you the actual restaurant because it was closed when I tried to do some filming. Now, what I will say is that the food in here was absolutely excellent. You've got two options where you can either go for pay as you go, where just like a normal restaurant, really, you pay for what you eat. Or you can do what we did, which <laughs> probably meant we ate far too much, was that you pay $17.99 and that turns it into an all-you-can-eat, where you keep ordering from the menu, they keep bringing it, and it doesn't cost you any more than $17.99. Now moving up a deck, so up to deck 7, the next two venues that I'm going to show you are the Keito, which I'm hoping I'm saying that right, <laughs> sushi restaurant and also the teppanyaki restaurant. Now, it's quite a difficult one to show you actually because the way that they've split it here, it looks like the same restaurant. Now, the sushi restaurant is actually all of the chairs here that you're looking at and all of the chairs on the outside. And the teppanyaki is a restaurant that I'll walk you into now. Now, unfortunately, I can only tell you what other people I'd met thought of this one because I'm not a huge fan of fish. So, yeah, a sushi restaurant is probably my worst nightmare. But, hey... I've eaten in teppanyaki before, this looked pretty good when you walk past it and anyone that I'd met on the ship said that they really really rated it so certainly no red flags and no warning signs from me here. Now the final speciality dining option from onboard Virtuosa that I'm going to show you today is Butcher's Cut. So this is directly beside the sushi restaurant up on deck 7 and in here you can get a huge range of steaks ranging from the more entry level kind of tender 12 ouncer for the equivalent of about £30 all the way up to dry aged tomahawks and they come in about £95 for two. Now considering we're on a ship that holds over 6,000 people I'm hoping that you will be as well but I was really surprised and quite taken aback actually by how close and how intimate this restaurant was. You quite often find that specialities on big ships can be just as bad as the main dining rooms but yeah massive thumbs up from me on this one. So that's a tour of every dining option on board MSC Virtuosa. Now I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have my final ask would be that you would think about subscribing to the channel because it really does help to bring you guys more content from more ships. But look, for now, thank you so much for watching as always and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks. Bye.